Hi, today I want to talk about something called constructible numbers. This is something you may have run to in a class and been very confused by because if you talk to your professor or teacher and they say it's something you can build with a compass and a straight edge, that really doesn't tell you anything about what it is to mean constructible. And if you go online and ask what a constructible in number is, you're going to get some weird, complicated e explanation having to do with R and a set and a field and various complex numbers and things. It's all very confusing. So let's start simple. Pretend for a minute that you're just a dude a long time ago. Uh, you have sticks hopefully some straight sticks, and you have some sand. How would you invent a number system with this? Well, it's not straightforward, is it? The easiest way I can think of is you take one stick, and you say, okay, this stick is one. This stick is one unit long. Everything else can be measured based on this. That's simple. So one of the rules for constructible numbers is you have to have a unit. There has to be a unit of one. That uh, is not made clear in the resources that I found online. So rule number one, you have a stick <laughs> and it's length one. Rule number two, you have arbitrarily long straight stick so that you can extend this with one stick. So if you have one, you can make two by putting the stick next to this long stick and put them not and, and, and then you have two and you can make three and four and so on. Well, that's okay. You've now invented all of the counting numbers using sticks and sand. <laughs> what else can you do? Well, suppose you also had some string and you can tie a couple of the sticks together. And so you take two sticks that are the same length and you tie their one end of each stick to get to the other stick. So now you have something that we typically call a compass. What it is, is something that can measure the distance between two points and copy that distance, you know, if you hold on to it carefully. So you'll notice if you ever have a compass that they have, uh, some of them have a little uh, adjuster that allows you to tighten them so they don't move while you're moving it along. Keep in mind, this is very rudimentary. This is not the full theory of how compasses work. But what that allows you to do is copy lengths without using the stick. And this is important later on because you're going to want to copy relative lengths. So what you can do with the standard length, you can draw uh, a length or you can draw a circle. So your first question might be, okay, if I draw a circle, am I not drawing pi? Isn't pi constructible? Well, no, because only constructible numbers only count if it's a straight line. And you can't do that with a with a compass. You know, you know, a circle doesn't translate to a straight line in a way that is constructible with your sticks and your sticks tied together. So you have constructed all of these numbers. What else can you do? So if you have a set of numbers for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, what else is useful? Well, you should be able to add them, which you can. You say them end to end. Can you subtract them? Well, sort of. You can subtract a smaller number from a bigger number. So the next question in your mind might be, what about negative numbers? Well, if you pretend or if you set up a direction that's positive and a direction that's negative, then you can. You can, you can say, okay, if I put this stick to the left rather than the right, that's minus one. And suddenly you've changed your numbers from all the positive counting numbers, all the positive natural numbers, to all of the integers except zero. So you've got all of your integers except zero. What about zero? Is zero constructible? That depends. You can make zero if you decide that a point is zero, a, a, a stick with no length. So an invisible stick, that's zero. So then all the addition of subtraction makes sense. So now you've created something that mathematicians would call a group or uh, uh, something with one, I don't know if it's technically a group, but it's something that has one 
complete operation. Addition, abstraction, the same operation, the opposites of each other. You've created integers with addition and subtraction. Just using your sticks and sand, which is pretty cool. And we still really haven't used the compass yet. So that gives you a whole set of numbers. And if you're only going to count things, add subtract things, do accounting, you're done. You've got an entire number system. And this is kind of how things worked back in the day, and not exactly. I'm being I'm brushing over a lot of details. But uh this didn't satisfy people for long. So what else can you do with these numbers? Well, it turns out that you can do some interesting things. You can divide things. So somebody figured out that this compass is useful. You can draw circles take an endpoint of any length, take a line of any length, and at the endpoint, draw a circle. And then the other endpoint, draw that same circle. Don't change the length of your compass. As long as that circle is bigger, is between half and the full length of that line segment, so pick some arbitrary length, you can draw this line between the intersections of the circles. And that, it turns out, is what we call a perpendicular bisector. It's at 90 degrees, you know, pi over 2 radians, to the original line segment, and it's halfway across. And that's extremely useful. So now you've invented one half. You suddenly got yourself into fractions. So with this you can do a half, a quarter, an eighth, and so on. Is that all you can do? Well, no. As it turns out, there's this thing called a similar triangle. Well, similar triangles, multiple. <laughs> you have to have multiple. There's no things in one similar triangle. Yes, a triangle is similar to itself. But when two triangles are similar, you can create fraction. This is kind of how you do it. You have a, a, a line that you want to dissect. Let's say we want to trisect it, make it into three. We want to create a third. So what we do is we put another line that's parallel. How do you do parallel? You do two perpendiculars. So you make an angle by a, a segment bisector. You divide it in half, you got it in the right angle, and you go down and you do it again, and suddenly you've got a parallel line. Um, that, you make the length of three. So the little the one at the top is some arbitrary length, and the one at the bottom is three. Then you make sure that these two lines are have the same vertical you know, endpoint, or you, you just make a line and pretend that's vertical. You make the line way up here, and then you draw these lines. And it turns out that you're evenly dividing the original length by three. So now you've invented a third. And you can use this method to invent all of the fractions that have one at the top. And then how would you make bigger ones? You would just add them together. So all what we call rational numbers are constructible using this method. And you get more fancy later on. You can do all kinds of funky things that you'll see on the internet. But basically, this is the theory behind how you create all of the rational numbers. So all rational numbers are constructible. Is that all the constructible numbers? Well, let's find out. So since we can divide numbers, can we also multiply them? Yes, we can. And here's how that's done. Again, you use similar triangles and you just scale it up by the number you want. It's not that complicated, but it's not really intuitive either. So then you can multiply, you can divide, except by zero, of course, and you can add and subtract. So now you've got what they might, what some people call a field. You've got all these numbers, all the rationals. That's nice. Well, at some point, somebody figured out that this triangle with three on the bottom and four on the side, has a hypotenuse, this is the long side, of five. And Pythagoras published the result, I think they knew about this before, but that this is true because three squared plus four squared is five squared. So it doesn't, it's not real obvious here, but this apparently means that you can construct something called a square root. So you can get the square root of 25 by making this triangle. It might be easier to see this way. If you make a square with a side of 1 and a side of 1, what's the length of that diagonal? It's 1 squared plus 1 squared 
square root. So that's square root of 2. So the square root of 2 is a constructible number. And there were, you know, some Greek schools of thought where they thought that was, you know, totally irrational. But turns out it's constructible. And as, as we saw, the square root of 25 is constructible. Might be a little more obvious. The square root of 5 is clearly constructible. 1, 2, and square root of 5, right? And if you, another, and another easy thing to create is a, a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the size of that are 1, 2, and square root of 3. So if we square root of 2 is constructible, square root of 3 is constructible, square root of 5 is constructible, and square root of 4, of course, is 2, so you know how to make 2, does this suggest that all square roots are constructible? Well, it does, but it's a little bit more subtle than that. You can prove that they're all constructible by what we call induction. So you can show by showing that you can construct the square root of 2, and then if you add 1 to that, then you can construct 1 plus the square root of 1 plus square root of 2 squared, right? And that's 3, the square root of 3. And you can do the same thing, add 1, you get square root of 4, add 1, you get square root of 5, so on. By induction, you're in the sort of a spiral thing. You can prove that all integer square roots are constructible. And that is a whole bunch more numbers you just added to the system. So now you have positive numbers, negative numbers, 0, all the rational numbers, and square roots of whole, of whole numbers, positive. We'll only stick with positive here. You don't want to be trying to take square roots of negative numbers, although there is a whole theory about that with um, construction, but we're not going to get into that in this video. Instead, we're going to ask, is that the end? Is that the limit of what you can do with your sticks and your string and your sand? So lastly, turns out you can take the square root of any arbitrary number. And this is kind of how you do that. You take your compass and you make these lengths. First you've got to make x squared minus 1. So you take your number x, you make you square it, multiply it by itself, subtract 1. Then you do the same thing for x squared plus 1. You put them, you put those two lengths, and you make a right angle. So you set 1 here, the x squared minus 1. You make a right angle at the end, which we know how to do you double it and take the angle bisector. And then you do a straight line for however long you need to. Then you take an arc, you know, you take your compass, you make x squared plus 1, and then you get this triangle that is x squared plus 1 as the hypotenuse and x squared minus 1 as one of its sides. And it turns out, if you do the math, you get this fancy formula where everything cancels out, as shown here, and the result is that the other side is square root of 4 times x squared, which is 2x. So you can basically get the square root of anything using this formula. And that's the end. That's everything you can construct. All the numbers you can construct. The constructible numbers are all the whole numbers, all the integers, 0, all the rational numbers, and the square roots of all those rational numbers, and the square roots of the square roots. You can take square roots and more square roots and add things together to take more square roots. You can get something really messy like this, but then that's the limit. That's everything we've ever found. And that's the constructible number set. Thanks for listening.